Joining me now is Illinois Republican yeah, Congressman Adam Kinzinger, a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. So you've been there um, on Capitol Hill as a member of Congress for many years. And so every time there is a shooting, you see that there's calls for more gun control. But do you agree with President Trump that actually it was the mental health aspect that would have helped here? Yeah, absolutely. You look at the fact that the Air Force should have flagged this person through the NCIS system. That's the background system. When you're dishonorably discharged from the military, when you have a domestic violence issue, that will flag you in the system and you shouldn't be able to buy a gun. Something broke down there. You know, when he's asked about the idea of extreme vetting, it's kind of meant to kind of to, to be a little too cute by half on one end and saying, oh, you have extreme vetting for these refugees. What about for gun owners? It's very different, though, because extreme vetting for somebody wanting to buy a gun, that's your that's your right. That's your Second Amendment right under the Constitution. And so, look, we want to figure out how to give people the rights that they deserve, but at the same time, understand 99.99 repeating percent of gun owners are not buying guns to go use them in crimes like right. this. But when people do, it's great to see somebody that lives across the street from this church being able to engage back. Uh, let's listen to the Air Force Secretary who uh, uh, talked about what you were just mentioning about not flagging this for the FBI. Well, we're looking at all of our databases and, and all other cases like this. And, uh, and if, it's, if we find a problem, we'll fix it. You know, okay. we, we act in accordance with our values as an Air Force. Integrity first and excellence in all we do. And all right. that's what we're doing. Obviously, uh, um, Congressman Kinzinger, you know a lot about the Air Force. What do you think about close, dealing with a situation where you have a law that should have been followed or a procedure that should have been followed? Um, could you support something like what Senator Cornyn is going to introduce today, which is to try to figure out a way to get criminal con convictions uploaded quickly into the background sure. check system? Yeah, Heather's great, by the way. I know her. She's very good um, as the Air Force Secretary. But this has been a problem with the Air Force and maybe with DOD-wide for a long time. We, I, I had an issue where somebody was denied the ability to go get a loan, a mortgage loan for a house because they had something incorrectly put on their on mm -hmm. their record from the Air Force, where you have somebody that should have something put on their record and it wasn't. This has got to get figured out. And, and it's really, it should be easy to do with the era of computers. It's not like you're having to send, you know, a hard copy paper into some central hub. Uh, let's just get it done and make sure that people that should not be buying guns don't buy guns. Because if we enforce the laws that are on the books, and there's plenty of laws on gun ownerships on the books, uh, we can reduce this significantly. Uh, it was just a little over a month ago that we had the massacre in Las Vegas. I know that you had put forward, um, um, a request to the ATF to deal with bump stocks. Any update on that? No, we're still waiting to hear back from the ATF. I'm afraid they're going to come back and say the technicality of the law, they're still legal, in which case it'll take legislation. But look, we have banned uh, automatic weapons in Congress. Bump stocks get around that ban, albeit cute and technical, uh, but it gets around that. And I don't think that should be in the hand of, hands of the average American, the ability to basically modify a bump to make it a fully automatic weapon. So it's something I hope the ATF can deal with, because then they can deal with all the new commercial products that come on the market instead of us in Congress having to basically pass a law for each new commercial for each, every product. Every time there's a development. Um, right. Let me switch gears. You're also on the House Foreign Affairs Committee. We have President Trump coming up at 9 p.m. Eastern tonight, going to give a, a big speech in South Korea. Obviously, he, a lot of the focus will be on North Korea. He talked a little bit earlier yesterday, or maybe it was today, the time changes got me confused, but <laughs> about the possibility of sitting down for talks. Um, but he's in the past, he has said that that would be useless. Do you have any information on what he would say tonight about that? I don't know what he's going to say. I had lunch with him about, I'd say, a week ago now, and uh, he was kind of briefing what he was going to do on this trip. And I'll tell you, he's, got, he's very clear-eyed on this. I think he understands on the one end you have to be willing to use the military option because mm -hmm. that makes the not military option much more possible. And so I think you see a president that really is like likely to use it if he has to, but wants to do everything prior. And what, you know, what's going to work prior is ultimately getting North Korea to the table to force a solution. The question is, when is that timing going to happen? And we can't do it from the position of weakness like we've had, frankly, for the last couple of decades. He also indicated that there might be some sort of big announcement coming forward, that he thinks there's a progress and a development. Do you know what that might be? I don't know what it is, uh, but I can tell you, again, the administration and the president have a very kind of wide 50,000-foot view of what, what do we need to do to compel North Korea. And I think that includes both carrots, but maybe sticks with China. And that may be what you're going to see the president talk about is, you know, we may be willing to go pretty far with China to compel them to stop all the commerce in North Korea, because over 80 percent of North Korean mm -hmm. commerce comes through that border. All right. Congressman Adam Kinzinger, thanks for joining us today. You bet. Anytime. Thanks.